Good morning. Today we're going to uh, take a look at some uh, basic modeling concepts. I, I can't be there today, but we're going to try it this way. Um, let's just uh, get started. First of all, let's take a look at the system variables in different areas. As you can see, you have a mechanical system on the left-hand side here, an electrical system on the right-hand side, a rotational system here on the bottom left, and uh, then we have this uh, hydraulic system here. All this I have something in common. If you look at the definition of power of this system on the left hand side the mechanical system this uh, has the force and the velocity as the product of those two is power on the electrical system the pro product of the voltage and the current is also power on the rotational system torque and the angular velocity and here we have power which is uh, volume flow rate and uh, pressure. So, we, based on that, I mentioned to you a little earlier that Professor Painter thinking was that all these systems are cousins of each other, although they have different units, but they behave basically the same in terms of the um, dynamic system behavior and the and the response of each one of them, but uh, with different units, but the structure is the same. I think we touched that on that the last time. Now, let's take a look at the next slide. And here, thus, if we make a little table, we are going to generalize all those uh, different factors like force, voltage, and torque, and pressure. We will call it efforts and the velocity, the current, and the angular velocity and volume flow rate will call them flows. So it follows based on the last discussion that the power is effort times flow. And uh, that's the way we're going to call them in order to be able to model systems in different energy domains. Now the next slide talks about the um, generalized power and energy variables that if you look at how uh, you make at this uh, um, little picture the relationship between the effort and the flow as we have defined it before and the derivative of, of the uh, position in this case and the derivative of the momentum have a relationship to those so if we put effort here and flow over here, the derivative of this will give us the momentum and the derivative of the flow would give us the, pardon, excuse me, the derivative of the position would give us the flow. So this is a, um, just a summary of what you can do with all these generalized variables. But in reality, if you take the time and look at this in detail on your um, in the web page you will see that by doing the definition of effort and flow and the displacement and momentum we have made a very large definition of all the different variables on systems that we have and so in here we have a situation where we we can represent the efforts this way uh, with all the variables across there, the flows as you can see here, the displacements and the momentum. So for example, just let's take the displacement just to make a point on the translation system is, is known as displacement, on the rotation is known as the angle, on the electrical the charge and the hydraulic the volume flow rate, the volume, excuse me. So. Um, <clears throat> we can also look at this way what force, velocity, displacement and momentum are and look on the left hand side uh, we are going to use symbols like this, we'll call it E, this we'll call it F 
the displacement we'll call it Q and the momentum we'll call it P. With these four variables, we can model systems that are in all these domains. So, one thing that we um, have touched a little bit in, the, in previously is that um, dynamic system as a mechatronic system is, um, is composed of electrical components and the mechanical components. For example, here is the, the model of a started motor of an engine. Uh, when you turn your key, you, you close the circuit between the battery and the motor a torque is produced and the bending rotates so that the motor starts. So if in this simple system we make a model um, you can understand how the mechanical component, let's see if we can circle this for a, make it a little easier to understand it here. And here you have for example this is the electrical side. I guess we may need to change the color of the pen Let's see if we can do that uh, real quick, maybe. I think the properties is what we need. Um, in that regards, we can use a different color here and make it all red to make it nice and neat, okay? There we go. Though when we get to white paper, we might be able to use the other color. So there you go, battery. So this is the the electrical side, this is the mechanical side, the motor, and of course this continues in here also on the mechanical side. If you um, make a model on what <coughs> we call it a word connection, you may say a word bone graph, you have the battery here, you have the connection between the battery and the motor is through this voltage and current, remember? two power variables that we just learned and then we have in here the torque and the angular velocity we're connecting these two other parts so each part of a system is connected by these two variables so now what we can do is to represent an entire model of a vehicle in using this type of connections so it's pretty simple I think you say on this side is the engine which would be the main power source right there and we have the clutch which is another component but you see between the engine and the clutch uh, the torque and the angular velocity are the two communication variables of course the clutch is a control because if you press it it disconnects it <coughs> if you release it it connects then it goes to the gearbox the gearbox goes to the drivetrain and after it goes to the drivetrain goes to the differential which distributes the motion to the one wheel or the other wheel over here see so there's the other one so <clears throat> that way we can integrate an entire system but the point here is that all this efforts so-called torques t1 t2 t3 t4 t5 b will become the e variable and the velocities are the is represented here with w1 w2 and w3 this would be the the flows now there is a an important concept that relates the two methods of between the block diagram and the bone graph method. In the first case, in the block diagram method, in this case, A takes some action on element B. B responds with some with some with some action also on A. So if A acts on B through the effort E, B responds with flow towards A. Or the reverse is true. If if B acts on A with the variable E, A responds with the variable F. There's always a two-way street on this. So that two-way street is represented in another way. See this this variable, this E variable, that one, we chose to represent it with this vertical line. 
beta 1. And this variable f, we choose to represent it with this green line. So what does it say? If A takes an action and presses on B, B will respond with a flow. And the same thing is true, uh, the reverse is true on the right hand side. If A acts on A, if the B acts on A, then A responds with a flow to B. And that is uh, what's important here, that concept. So the little picture that you see on the on the bottom here and the little picture that you see on this here represent respectively the block diagrams that are at the top. Let's keep going. Having said this, we are going to embark on some very basic important discussion and that is that we have basic elements. We have nine basic elements. You will have two sources that you see here. We have uh, two elements that will represent with, with different uh, symbols, like in this one it would be the source of effort, but on this side we'll call it source of flow. Then we have two elements that allowed us to do junctions, <coughs> the zero, and the other element that allowed us to do this would be the flow here. So in here you have this, so those two sources, two types of connections that makes four elements. The other five elements are the ones that represent different things in nature, like this inertia element. We call it I, we use a first little example on the first lab. Then we have the C element for capacitive element. Then you have the resistive element. And all those are three elements that we have already seen. What we have not seen are this. There's two that are two port elements, meaning uh, they transform energy. They don't dissipate or store anything. Like in this case, a set of gears, for example, transforms one velocity into another velocity and a torque into another torque. So in here, um, so those are the nine elements. We need to learn also <coughs> to complete this um, representation of this connection or junction. If we draw a half arrow from A to B, the power flows from A to B. <coughs> if the power goes from B to A, the arrow goes this way. So between the, this vertical stroke and the horizontal stroke, as we have said, the vertical is the effort and the horizontal the flow, we add one more thing, that the power goes from A to B with using the half arrows, like in this case. One thing that is important to emphasize at this point as some of the things that I ask you for writing in your notes is that the assignment of this power direction okay, is independent of the, con of the determination whether A causes the effort on B like you see here. See, in this case B causes the effort on A, but you see the power is in the same direction, meaning the interchange goes between those two elements, but the power goes from A to B in one case, uh, well, excuse me, in both cases from A to B. We'll talk some more about this a little later. Now here's another illustration of what I'm trying to say uh, with this uh, elements and the connections. So in this case, power goes this way, and in the other case, power goes towards the left. 